Hello, and welcome back to the House Call Pro QuickBooks Online video integration series. Uh, I am, of course, Tomasz Waples, and I'm going to be talking to you today about the data that we can import from QuickBooks Online into House Call Pro. Now, if you have not already watched our integration video, I'm going to suggest you go ahead and, and give that a quick view. We are going to be referencing some things in this video uh, that we talked about over there. Um, and so it's going to be helpful for you to have already seen that before we start talking about uh, what does import. Now, I'm going to hop directly into QuickBooks Online. And now, please do, of course, keep in mind this is our test account. It is by absolutely no means a representative of what a real business account should look like. Uh, this is just the test account we use to you know, test products before we, before we send them out to market. So I'm going to come down into our reports. And I've prepared some custom reports here. But uh, this first one, it's just based off of a basic customer contact list. Uh, we added some fields, broke some fields out, uh, but nothing too crazy going on here. Because this is basically a layout of the customer information that can come over in the House Call Pro, right? The first thing we want to talk about, and you may remember this, of course, from that uh, that integration video, is the customer itself. Because House Call Pro, we can bring in a first level customer. Oh, let me try to highlight that again. A first level customer. We can bring in a second level customer, right? A parent and a child. But we cannot, we cannot under any circumstances bring in that third level customer, that grandchild, right? So now just for some real world examples, you know, this first level customer up here, this is just your regular old residential customer, right? Um, they say, hey, you know, my my kitchen sink is leaking and I need you to come out. Uh, my, my kitchen faucet is leaking. I need you to come out and take a look at it, right? It's going to be that regular residential customer. This second level here. You know, we see it a lot with property management, right? You know, the, the first level, the highest level customer is, you know, ABC property management. And then, you know, that second level customer is one, two, three Main Street, right? It's the property that they manage or one of the properties that they manage. Now, this parent-child-grandchild relationship, it's a little bit less common. We don't see it as often. Typically, when we do... It's in a, a commercial setting or maybe in a new build setting. Uh, perhaps we've got our general contractor as our highest level customer. We've got each property or uh, each um, neighborhood, excuse me, each subdivision that they're working on as their second level. And then we have each individual house, you know, inside that subdivision as the third level. Um, if you do have this kind of situation, Probably we want to talk to our bookkeeper or our accountant about how to how to manage that if we do need to import them. Um, a lot of people, we do see them merge uh, into the second level. A lot of people, we do see them uh, break off those second levels as independent customers. So each neighborhood um, would be its own independent customer. And we just have the information about the general contractor in the contact information. But, you know, there are some bookkeeping, there are some accounting ramifications to this. So please do have a conversation with your bookkeeper or your accountant before you just start merging customers. Also, something to keep in mind, it's only that third level itself, right? And any invoices or payments on that third level itself that won't come in, right? Any invoices, payments that are on the second level, and of course, any that are on the first will still come in. One and two will still import. It's just three down here that isn't going to import, right? Next up, we want to talk about phone numbers uh, because House Call Pro, it is going to import the numbers if it can. But because this is importing into that, that phone field that we use for, you know, texting and on my way and all those good things, we have to make sure it's... Uh, a usable phone number, modern day <laughs> usable phone number before we bring it in. Um, I know uh, I've seen a lot of people who have those older phone numbers before zip codes were acquired in their QuickBooks, or you know maybe they've got uh, too many because there was maybe a typo. Those phone numbers they won't come into House Call, 
right? The customer itself, uh, itself still will. Any other information on the customer, of course, still will. It's just that specific phone number that won't come in. Now, we're going to talk about this in our, our next video where we talk about what comes from House Call Pro back over into QuickBooks. But when people have these kinds of situations, what I generally suggest is, you know, import your data as it is, right? As we are having these customers come back to us, as they're calling in, we're going to say, oh, hey, Mr. First Customer, Miss Second Customer, it looks like I don't have your phone number here in my system. Let me grab that from you. It looks like I, I don't have your correct address or let me confirm your address right from uh, for you right now. All of that information will flow back over into QuickBooks and update QuickBooks. Again, we'll talk more about that later, but I don't want you to worry if, you know, maybe most of your phone numbers don't have area codes or, you know, someone maybe was a little bit overexcited and I don't know, they put extent extensions or things like this in here, right? It's okay if that information does not come in in the initial import, we can update it in house call as we go, as these people are calling in, as we're doing service for them and send it back over into QuickBooks. Now, one thing I do wanna call out, formatting, right? Like if we've got the parentheses, if we've got the dashes, if we've got a one in front of the number, this is all totally fine. Uh, house call will bring that information in just fine. Uh, put it in the house call, pro, house call pro format. It's only if we've got too many or too few numbers that we, that we have to worry. Next up, we're going to talk about this email address. Now, this is very similar to phone numbers, right? We have to make sure it's uh, it could be a valid email address, right? That it's got all the necessary components. It's got something, the at symbol, right? Something else dot provide, uh, you know, Tomash at housecallpro.com, right? It has to fall into that format. If it doesn't fall into that format, just like those phone numbers, House Call Pro is just not going to bring in that email, right? It's going to bring in, you know, the rest of the information, the phone number that's good, the name, the address, all that good stuff. It's just not going to bring in the email address. And of course, we update that in House Call as we go, send it back over into QuickBooks. The name, the first and last name uh, that we have in QuickBooks is going to come over into House Call, and that is going to come over as the name that we have in QuickBooks, of course. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about here are the addresses. And I've done a couple different things here in this test account, just so you can see how it might look. Sometimes, you know, all of the address information, it's just in that, that first address field, right? Or sometimes we forget an address entirely. I don't want you to worry too much about this, right? Because House Call's gonna bring in what's in QuickBooks, right? If everything's in this first uh, address field, it's going to bring everything into house call. It's just going to be in that first address field, right? If it's blank in QuickBooks, it's just going to be blank over on house call, right? And these are the kind of things that, again, we, we fix up as we go, right? If it's formatted like this, you know, the, the Google integration that house call has, you know, showing you the, the Google map, showing you the, the picture of the house, the Zillow uh, price on it, things like this. Of course, those won't work until we, you know, reformat this address, but that's very easy to do as we go. And of course, if this is a historic customer and, you know, maybe they've moved out of the state, right? We probably don't want to spend the time going back in and making edits to their custom, right? Now, that pretty much sums up our customer import. So now we're going to move on to our invoices. So let me just hop back over into my report. And again, this is a slightly modified report, but this is just the uh, invoice list, right? The invoice list report. Now here, we wanna check for a couple of things. The first thing, we wanna make sure every invoice has a number. Now it's fairly uncommon in QuickBooks Online for an invoice not to have a number, but you know, it does happen from time to time. Like here, we can see that there is no number for this invoice. The only real concern there, the only thing we want to keep in mind there is that those invoices, um, they are going to be assigned a number in House Call Pro, but it's going to throw off the invoicing sequence a little bit. So if you can, you know, go back, check, 
throw in an invoice number if you can. If you can't, it's certainly not the end of the world. It's certainly not going to break anything. Just be aware that it is going to, uh, you know, make a, a little bit of a interesting invoicing sequence just around, you know, these couple invoices, right? The other thing we want to talk about are open balances, because if there is an open balance here in house call, or I'm sorry, if there's an open balance here in QuickBooks, there is going to be an open balance in house call, right? Now, the thing here, um, if a payment is applied to a customer, your aging report may not show that that customer has a balance. But if the payment was not applied directly to our invoice, we may still have an open invoice. So now if we're looking here and we're saying, hey, three of 21, that doesn't seem right. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't have any uh, open invoices hanging out from that long ago. Maybe just take a quick check, take a quick look in your invoice and just see if maybe there's a payment that was applied to a customer, but not to an invoice or something like that, just so you can get that sorted out. Um, if it imports and it's still open, totally fine, not a problem. It's just, we'll wanna go ahead and address that in House Call Pro. Next thing we're gonna talk about here, there we go. My mouse had a little bit of a moment there is our products and service list. And this is the last big thing that we're going to talk about in terms of what comes in from QuickBooks into House Call. Because House Call, we can import services, inventory, and non inventory items. We can import those three item types. So long as you know your items are one of those three, they will come into QuickBooks, uh, come in from QuickBooks. What we cannot import are bundles. Um, if you have a bundle, house call, it just it won't pull it in initially. We cannot then integrate back over to this bundle later. Um, so do consider what you're using this bundle for. Uh, and if you can break it apart, um, if there is another may, way we can maybe build it in QuickBooks so that we can import it over into house call. Now, of course, as I said before, there are a couple other things that are going to come in in that import, your classes, your tax rates, things like this, some, some account information, uh, like we saw on that settings page in the integration video. But these are the big pieces, the customers, the invoice, the payments, of course, that go along with those invoices to close them, right, and our items. These are the big pieces of the import. And again, just like before, if there's anything you're not sure of here, if you have any more questions, go ahead, smash that chat bubble, lower right hand corner, um, and, and we'll be able to help you in there. Uh, but hopefully this gives you a big picture idea of what it is that's going to import from QuickBooks Online into House Call. So in our next video, in our next series of videos, we're going to be talking about what's going to go from House Call back over into QuickBooks. Uh, we're going to start with a general overview of, of sort of the customers and the invoices and payments, how those go over, and then start getting a more detailed breakdown of the customer specifics, the invoice specifics, the payment specifics. Those should all be linked uh, down below this video. So please go ahead, check those out. Um, otherwise, uh, go ahead and import your data and we'll see you in the next video.